Welcome to Core Cutting Today, where I break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting, including YouTube TV ad support for more devices. We'll tell you what. Uh, Friendly TV is adding a new channel, and Comcast's hidden data cap fees could add up to $100 additional in your bill. We'll break all this down and more. Hey, real quick though, thank you to everybody who hung out. I know I wasn't here the last couple of days. I typically am. Surgery went well. Have my big shoulder sling on. Apologize if I hit the microphone there. And, but I'm back, we're working, and videos will return to normal. So thank you to everybody for the kind words. I'm excited to be back. If you want to learn more about these stories, check out the show notes down below and in the first pinned comment, I'll put a link to each story there so you can read about them for yourself and come up with your own opinions. I'd love to hear from you. And lastly, before we get into it, if you're new here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here so YouTube recommends our videos to more people, helping us grow, helping us support families, and hopefully helping you break free from the high cost of cable TV. So let's start off. Comcast's uh, data cap fees are here. They're in a select few markets. Northeast, for example, does not have Comcast data fees, but most of the country does. And they could add up to $100 in additional fees on your home internet bill. We're gonna break this down, give you a quick explanation of some ways to avoid this and more. But you get 1.2 terabytes of data, that works out to be about 500 hours of HD video, but just about um, six hours a day of 4K video. Now, if you're running multiple streams and doing other stuff, you can burn through that a lot faster. If you go over that data cap limit of 1.2 gigabytes, the first time you do it in a 12 month period, you get an additional 50 gigabytes free with a warning. After that, it's $10 per 50 gigabytes of data. You do up to a maximum of $100 per month. So be very careful of that. Now, of course, you can switch accounts or internet providers. There's a growing number of internet providers, including T-Mobile, Verizon, Starlink, and more, who do not have data caps. That's always an option you could switch to. The second option you have is to closely monitor your data. Uh, team, or, uh, Comcast does allow you to track your data. You can do things like use HD over 4K and more to avoid it. But be aware of this. While most people don't hit it now, as 4K video becomes more and more prevalent, the data cap will become a bigger issue in core cutting. Keep a close eye on that. Increasingly, though, most cable internet providers are not having data caps. Hopefully, Comcast joins the bandwagon, ditches their data caps soon. All right, this week on October, the um, I want to make sure I give you the right date. Oop, uh, the fourth, I believe. Yes, October 4th. I'm sorry about that. It's what happens after surgery. October 4th, Friendly is adding MeTV Plus. This is the second channel to the wildly popular MeTV. Shows classic TV shows and movies just like MeTV does. And for the first time, it will be streaming online through Friendly TV. In the past, it was in about 30 markets around the United States. Launched just two years ago in two markets. Has slowly been expanding to new areas ever since. And now is available on Friendly TV October 4th. They didn't give an exact hour, sometime on the 4th that will go live, so keep that in mind. All right, next story up of the day. YouTube TV has had one main complaint a lot of people didn't like, is the fact that it did not work on Fire tablets. Now, I love tablets. I often have one like I've been doing over the weekend for football, have a second screen going, but you couldn't use YouTube TV on it. Well, now that's changed. YouTube has unblocked the Silk browser. Now through the Silk browser, if you go to tv.youtube.com, you can finally use YouTube TV. I did it all weekend long. It worked really well on my Fire Max 11 without issues. You need to sign in, approve your account, and then you can stream just like you would through a browser anywhere else. In the past, Amazon had blocked that browser, preventing you from using it on the Fire TV, and you had to do weird things like sideload and other issues that were less than ideal for most people. Sadly, there's still no official app for the Fire TV tablets, but at least now you can use it through the uh, browser, which is a really nice improvement. Hopefully, uh, Google brings an official YouTube TV app to the Fire tablets in the future. All right, Pluto TV added, is adding eight new channels. It's October. They announced eight new channels. They did not give dates, but these are the eight new channels. The Real Disaster Channel, focusing on all things disaster, The Asylum, Pluto TV Icons, Destiny, Classic TV Variety, uh, a real classic old TV, uh, uh, a group of it, including musicals and more with it. Action Dramas, Ghost Hunters, just in time for Halloween, and 90s Kids, Nickelodeon takes you back to the 90s with Rugrats, Hey Arnold, uh, 
and more. It's all your favorite 90s Nick shows that made the splat the def uh, that defined a generation. So check that out. They also added a ton of movies in the show notes down below. I'll pull a link to that. Ton of Halloween horror movies. They will every night at 8 p.m. Eastern on Pluto TV's 31 Days of Horror be airing a different horror movie every night of the week in October. So check that out if you're like horror movies and you don't want to pay for them, Pluto TV will have a ton of them for free on Pluto TV. All right, we have learned what is happening to the last of the AT&T sports nets. So earlier this year, over the summer, Warner Brothers Discovery, the new owners of AT&T sports nets, announced they intended to shut down or sell these networks. Well, the last one we didn't know what was going to happen to was AT&T Sportsnet Southwest. Now, we had long heard rumors that it was going to get sold to the Astros and Rockets, and now that's become an official reality. And Friday, they announced a deal to sell uh, AT&T Sportsnet Southwest to the Rockets and Astros. It would be renamed as Space City uh, Home Network, or SCHN for short. Space City, Houston Rockets, Astros, and more makes sense. But... Uh, it will be the same places you find it now. So if you already have it through Fubo or you have it through uh, your cable provider, it will still be there. It's just going to get renamed and be offering um, games starting off with the Rockets opener versus Indiana on October 10th, 2020. It will be the first game to air on this network. They didn't say exactly what day of this month they would officially do the rename. Sometime between now and October 10th, the AT&T Sportsnet logos would vanish and be replaced by Space City Home Network. So check that out again. Same channels, no change here. They're just buying the network and renaming it. So new owners, same same great Bat Channel. Anybody remember that old Batman reference there? All right, AMC Plus has been struggling. It hasn't quite reached the big market they've wanted. Now AMC has announced a ad-supported um, plan. Now they announced this earlier, but now we have all the details about it. The ad support plan will cost $4.99 a month and include a Quote, light ad load. We'll see. I haven't tested this out. Anybody here test this? How light of an ad load is that? It is significantly cheaper than the old um, ad-free version, but you can still get the old ad-free if you would prefer that if you don't want to be paying for ads in your commercials. Um, this will give you the ability to access um, AMC Plus content, ad-supported um, with it, or ad-free, depending on how much you're willing to pay. And lastly, we did a survey uh, last month of over 2,000 readers and viewers here asking all kinds of core kind of related questions. And according to our readers, Roku is absolutely dominating the market. I want to ask, do you use a Roku? What's your favorite streaming player? That's my question of the day. But according to our readers, there is over 66% um, of our readers use Rokus. After that, it comes down to um, uh, Fire... or um, Smart TVs at 38%, Fire TVs at 37% with that. And then in fourth place, PC and laptops, which is actually a drop. People are watching less TV and PC and laptops. That's down to just 27%. Apple TV in fifth place at 14.2%. And Chromecast, oh, I lost track of what time it was. And Chromecast came in uh, last at 14%. So question to you. Did any of this surprise you? Does it surprise you that only 14.2% of people use Apple TV? That's in fifth place. Does it surprise you that 66% of owners use Roku? Now, a few things here. People use multiple devices. They were able to click multiple boxes. So if they have in the living room a Roku, but in the bedroom they use a smart TV from LG, for example, they could select both for their answer here. But I'd love to hear from you what you do. What devices do you use? And does this line up with you? Does it surprise you at all to see uh, Roku, Smart TVs, and Fire TVs, the top three, Apple TV in fifth, Chromecast even farther down. Leave me a comment and let me know. Well, that's it for today. I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll be back again tomorrow with another video. Until then, take care, be safe. Have a great day, everybody.